We're going off script on this episode to talk about some of the best target earners of 2023. And I've got an esteemed member of the Undroppables joining me to get into it. And in his honor, let's roll. Untangling the threads that weave together the fantasy landscape. This is Unraveled. I'm Trav Hostin and Wes Coastin. Set off the top there, I am going off script with some target earners on this episode, and it is going to be a good time. Previously on the first episode of Unraveled, I was talking about some of those playoff losers. Going to move that regularly scheduled programming to earlier next week, just to try and have that come out earlier in the week so that the content that we have dropping on the Undroppables channel later in the week gets that room to breathe. But I wanted to get something out on the channel this week, so I sent a message to today's guest and we made it happen. Joining me tonight is a good friend in the fantasy football space and now a teammate after all of these years. Someone whose thought processes make me question my knowledge of dynasty fantasy football sometimes with the rabbit holes he can take me down. The host of what, for my money, is the best damn dynasty show up in this piece, the Undrafted Fantasy Football Pod. Of course, that is Jax Falcone, a.k.a. Scott Boulanger. In my neck of the woods, though, we might pronounce Boulanger. it Boulanger. How you doing tonight, Jax? Good to What's see happening? you, brother. Yeah, Jax Falcone just flows off the tongue a little bit better than the Boulanger, but you can uh, you, you can hit me up, Canadian. I love Canadians. They're the nicest Absolutely. people on the planet. That gives you honorary status, I will have you know. So uh, yeah. you are one of us. But yeah. that being said, I kind of do have a hard time calling you your real name, and I just kind of have to call you Jax at all times. So I will Fine. continue with that. Jax, we've got a bit of a different format here tonight. Um, usually I don't do this type of thing, but we've got no show sheet. Uh, I got no notes here. We are going to fly. I mentioned off the top that we were going to talk about the best target earners of 2023. And what I'm going to do here is I have gone on to the Fantasy Points data suite. Friends of mine, uh, no affiliation or anything, just a really great product that I like to use yep. for my research. Um, and I am looking at the top target per route run leaders of 2023 and the threshold that i used jacks was a minimum of 200 routes run mm. uh, to see some of these guys and what we're going to do here tonight it was kind of an impromptu call up for me to get you to join the show and kind of an yeah. impromptu show sheet as well so i'm just going to go through the list jacks and i'm going to pick out some guys we might have questions about the show is not about the stat targets per route run but we are going to just kind of go through that list because these are guys that are earning targets targets per route run is Basically, what tells you in isolation of the amount of volume and the amount of routes that a guy ran, how often he's getting targeted when he's out there. So it differs from target share. Target share is more percentage of a team's targets. That can factor in a guy who may be a rookie and just coming up or had some injury. But these guys who played maybe less games or maybe had less routes run can have a higher targets per route run. And from that, we can pick out some, maybe some guys that we want to buy for breakouts in the future. Uh, maybe some younger guys that can bolster our dynasty rosters. Um, I love looking at wide receivers, Jax. I know that you like doing that as well. We've talked lots of wide receivers before. Uh, you excited to get it cracking tonight or what? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think the when you sent me this, I was excited to do it because targets per route run is a great um, data point. Uh, to consider because it targets are earned. And so all these people, all these players are earning targets and earning targets is what uh, pays us in PPR leagues. So uh, I'm excited to talk about these guys. I mean, as a group, they should all be a buy. I know I'll be talking about whether they're a buy or a sell a little bit, but um, you know, in general, we're kind of saying that maybe these guys are all buys, although value comes into play, but these guys are all earning targets, which is what you're looking for. Totally. And I think price point definitely comes into play with these guys as well, because you're going to see even those guys who run some of the most routes in the league, those elite guys are still at the top of this list, even though their sample might lend itself to their number being a little bit lower just because of the amount of routes they run. Um, price definitely comes into play here as well. Um, and yeah, I'm no data analyst by any means. Jax just want to preface this with that. I'm not talking correlations or probabilities or nothing, but people a lot smarter than me have said that this is a really good indicator of people being hashtag good at football. So we're going to dive in and, uh, tops on the list. No surprise here is Tyreek Hill. Jax, we're not really going to spend time on Tyreek. I think you already know with Tyreek, if you can buy him, 
for a reasonable price. Sure. Good luck with that. Um, I, d I would doubt that you can, cause he is number one at his position. Super exciting. 0 0.38 targets per route run. Essentially what that means on the flip side of the data is 38% of his routes. He saw a target, uh, yeah. insane. Absolutely yeah. insane number for Tyreek, almost 1,800 yards, tied for the league lead with 13 touchdowns, Jax. Going to move us on to number two, though, because I think there might be some more questions about this guy from maybe that dynasty lens that we like to talk here. Devontae Adams, he had 0 0.31 targets per route run, 30.5% uh, target share, uh, 170 targets for those Las Vegas Raiders, just an astronomical number. Uh, Devontae Adams' future is looking a little bit maybe uncertain. Uh, he showed us this year, which we haven't seen in his days in Green Bay, that he can be a good receiver sans good quarterback play potentially uh what's your take on Devonte adams standing are you uh potentially going in with that uncertain future or is that something that might make you shy away from him i think we, me and chalk talked about it on a recent pod and and uh chalk which of course when chalk talks we listen uh chalk had said that Devonte adams is his number one target this offseason and you know that makes a lot of sense considering right now he's the consensus wide receiver 28 uh, I'm using keep trade cut. I think we all kind of have Devonte in that wide receiver 30 range. He's, you know, uh, certainly a player that you can trade for. You don't necessarily have to give up something too rich in order to get Devonte onto your roster. And here's the thing. If you're a win now team, Devonte's set up for another year or two of, of high end production. There's also a possibility he's on the move. And if he goes to a place like, let's say, Mm, New York Jets and plays with um, Aaron Rodgers alongside Garrett Wilson. That would be a one-two punch uh, of epic proportions. He may not see the volume, but I think he'd be way more efficient in that offense. And, you know, anything less than 170 targets, let's say 140 or 150, is still a lot of targets. So for those reasons, Devontae Adams is a buy. And a lot of people will be looking to get off and will sell light knowing that he's 31 years old going into his 32-year-old season next year. Totally. I think his ceiling is just still there, right? We saw what he did with that bad quarterback play, get him in somewhere with a good quarterback. I've heard some people talking about the uh, the Raiders even going after Justin Fields, which I would really like for Devontae Adams. Eight touchdowns this year. That feels like kind of like almost floor for him, which is funny. Obviously, the floor yeah. is lower than that for him, but we know that the ceiling is so much higher than that, that eight just seems fairly pedestrian for Devontae <laughs> Adams. So I like that take on him as a buy if i'm a contending team i would absolutely go do that because yeah that uncertainty with the raiders and potentially somebody who's not got their ear to the grindstone as far as things that are happening with his movement might be more willing to take a bit of a discount there for um you to add him to your team with you know that fat target number you can't shy away from that regardless of what's happening there's going to be productions there's going there's going to be you know some of those weak winning weeks involved in that with that target number so I love that take on Devontae Adams. Next guy we're talking about here, Jax, is another aging veteran, and that is Keenan Allen in Los Angeles. 0 0.31 targets per route run, same as Devontae Adams. New coach for Keenan Allen, though, Jim Harbaugh coming in, and a lot of people very excited about what Jim Harbaugh can do for this team. I'm curious for you, though, just as kind of a quick snap question, do you think Keenan Allen can continue that top 10 quarterback play for the next, say, two or three years under Jim Harbaugh. Keenan Allen's a funny one. Uh, of course, he's actually a little bit older than Devontae Adams, and he is obviously a mega target earner. You know, we sort of, you know, we, we sort of have the idea that he's injury prone. Um, you know, he, he actually has been pretty reliable uh, with the injury bug, but as he ages here, I'd be a little bit nervous with him uh, and, and injuries there. So, so for those reasons, I would probably sell – down, I mean, you could probably sell to like Cortland Sutton plus, and you know, because Cortland Sutton's a nobody, you know what I mean? Like, you know, maybe yeah. even a, a player like a K Khalil Shakir plus, you know, I don't really know. I mean, I, I think I would, you know, even Marquise Brown, you know, there's a there's a number of players, uh, Calvin Ridley that you know are valued behind him that that people aren't necessarily too excited about. Another one that I really like is actually Jacoby Myers. Um, these are not sexy names, but these are players that you should be able to get you know, maybe those players plus a second. And, you know, sometimes when someone feels like they're moving up from that type of player, I mean, really, if you could only sell, uh, you know, 
uh, Keenan Allen for a second. That's almost, you know, good value. So sometimes you can yeah. sort of do the tricky one where you get one of those pieces that might be able to replace, you know, 80, 85 percent of, of Keenan Allen's production this coming year and maybe be more rel- reliable. And then you also get a draft piece uh, to sort of, you know, give yourself some insulation to that, but maybe even a younger player too. So a lot of different ways to go with Keenan Allen, but, you know, at the right cost, everybody's a buy, especially if you're going to be able to get a lot of targets for very inexpensive. Again, if you could go the other way and and just trade, you know, straight up, maybe a Khalil Shakir for Keenan Allen, do that all day long. You know, you got to get a plus when you're moving down, but if you can, if you can maybe trick someone into, you know, Dontavian Wicks straight up for Keenan Allen, these are the types of players that, you know, have a little bit of heat right now. And you never know. I mean, that could be a sell high uh, on, on Dontavian Wicks. So a lot of th- a lot of players like that where you may be able to make a move off of Keenan Allen or maybe onto Keenan Allen if you can do it right. So he's a player I'd be looking to go either way with. Yeah, I, I don't mind that either. I might be like might be a little more trepidatious to go after him just because of some of the Jim Harbaugh things. Like a lot of people are very excited and I am as well. He's a very good coach to groom a quarterback, but looking at his days in San Francisco, they were um, from 2011 to 2014. They ran the ninth, third, second, and 20th um, fewest plays, I guess. Uh, So they were down at the bottom as far as plays run aside from his final season. Uh, As far as pass attempts, second fewest, second fewest, fewest, and then uh, third fewest as far as pass attempts in his days with San Francisco. Now, I'm banking on the fact that he's a good enough coach that he can adapt his philosophy to the players because Justin Herbert needs to be throwing darts out there. Um, So I'm hopeful that that happens. Um, But I would still be a little bit trepidatious just on that fact, just in case they do try and kind of retool that running back room. um, And maybe they do draft one of those big wide receivers. I think that might be the bigger thing because if that passing volume does come down, then there's less targets to go around for these guys. And an alpha like a Marvin Harrison Jr. or a Malik Neighbors, who I know you are going to be talking with Ray GQ about on this week's Undrafted. It'll be out by the time this airs. Uh, So if anybody's listening to this, go check out that episode with Ray GQ. Absolute banger. Talk about all these rookies much better than I. I always rely on the Undrafted for all of that content in the offseason because I am no scout. But um Yeah, Keenan Allen's going to be an interesting case because I could go both ways too because historically I've loved him and you look at those targets that he's getting. um, But I'm a little bit scared that some of those targets might be going away. Might be go go buy Keenan Allen from Trav. He's scared. (laughs) Yeah, you know, but that's the that's the idea in the dynasty league is you know you got to see the 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 exit strategy both ways. You know, I mean, you know, you you hate to sort of have Keenan Allen die on your roster, but you know, if, if someone's afraid of that happening, you can also you know, sort of steal him from someone's roster and then maybe he dies on your roster. But, you know, at some point, every player dies on somebody's roster. Um, and sometimes it's the last price paid. And maybe if you can buy him really inexpensively, it's like, whatever, dude, I paid Dontavian Wicks for him. I'm happy. You know, whatever I get from him, I'm ready to ride him out till he dies. So, you know, e- each player is sort of looking at the, the the asset from a different lens. And you just want to take advantage of that. Someone who's had him rostered a long time, maybe like, fine, I'll just take, take whatever, you know what I mean? I'll just, mm-hmm. I'll just get off him and move forward. Maybe Don Taven Wicks is that guy for me. So, you know, just sort of play it, uh, play the room, read the room. Yeah, hundred percent. And I'll be honest with you, Jax, this is a, maybe a heartstrings one because I've been known to have some graveyard rosters with some players <laughs> dying all over the place from time to time. I definitely can bring my heart into the game from time to time, just because I have so much plan and you love these guys that help you win titles from time to time. Cause that's what we're doing. We're cash and checks and we're stacking championships over here at the undroppables, yes, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm going to reserve Jalen Waddle for maybe a little bit of a deeper breakdown into some of that uh, Dolphins target share jacks. Um, and then the next couple of guys, I think we can probably comb over a little bit too. Uh, Amon Ross, St. Brown, CD lamb, AJ Brown, um, those guys were at 0.3 and then AJ Brown started 0.29 targets per route run Puka Nakua at 0.29. I think like, do you want to give a quick thought on Puka? Cause I'm going to reserve it as well for another dive into the Rams target share over the off season. So keep her dialed to unraveled here on the undroppables channel. Um, I, I will, yeah, I will you, tell uh, you, yes. I will tell you, yes, we, we talked about Puka on the Ray G sh- show. So the show I had uh, the undrafted show, I folded, Puka in there because I felt like Puka was the guy that I needed to see where he valued Puka in accordance to Roma Dunze and Malik Mm -hmm. neighbors, because I feel like he's somewhere in there for me. And 
you know, I pushed Ray a little bit uh, on that topic to make a decision and he fell where I am on that. You know, I was like, you know, really pushed him because I wanted to see. And it was kind of a cool spot in the in the show. But, um, you know, we have uh, Puka Nakua right between, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Puka Nakua, Roma Dunze. And so I think that's about right. Um, you know, yeah. he's he's really, really awesome. So, uh, you know, he's also uh, he's hard to buy because he's very expensive and he's a top, you know, five or ten, depending on who you ask, dynasty wide receiver. So for those reasons, he's expensive. But there could be some some scaredy cats there, too, thinking that the one year wonder and, you know, willing to get out. So you could find some value in trying to transact Puka onto your roster. You know, I you know. It's a little unscripted, but you did send me a couple names. Who's the? the tell me where the next guy lands on this list because I'm super excited to hear where he is. Okay, okay. Um, I think that would be Mr. Rashi Rice, and he yes, actually. So uh, Puka Nakua is number eight on the list, and then we got Michael Pittman at nine, DeAndre Hopkins at ten. That's not surprising mm, because Tennessee sense. had nobody. Uh, I'd be trying to get out on DeAndre Hopkins in Dynasty, though. Absolutely, Numero eleven. Is wow. Rashi Rice for the Kansas wow. City Chiefs. What he is the poster boy for targets per route run jacks because early in the season he wasn't getting a bunch of run. He was behind Kadarius fucking Tony. He mm. was behind Sky Moore. He was behind MV Brick Hands S. Um Ping pong paddles. Just getting no it was puzzling. It was puzzling. Uh, but we saw him work his way. You know, Big Red's that veteran coach who wants to maybe see that guy earn it. Uh, did Rashi Rice ever? Not only was he crushing it as a receiver, see him out there mucking guys as a blocker. Um, just seems like the guy that you absolutely would want on your team and riding with you. Uh Rashi Rice, man, like is this. Is this the guy we've been wanting in Kansas City since Tyree Hill left? It, it must be. I mean, here's the thing is a lot of people, including myself, uh, have to have a reckoning with their pre-draft evaluation because I did have Rashi down a bit. And, you know, the, the one of the sayings that we have on the show and here at the Undroppables is be ready to be wrong. So I'm ready to be wrong on Rashi Rice. I'm, I've done a heel toe. I was doing that. During the season, you know, with various guests, I would ask them about Rashi and, you know, where he was. And as he was climbing, I was I was kind of trying to get ahead of it rather than be behind it. And I think Rashi has shown enough. And this stat was one of the reasons I wanted to do this show, because, you know, he earned targets. He's earning targets on uh, an elite offense with the best quarterback on the planet. And he's, you know, he performed well. He was very efficient with those targets. So. All of that after, on, a, on a rookie, you know, after, after, after his rookie season, I am super excited about Rashi Rice. And, you know, he may be a buy. Um, I know that on keep trade cut, his value is super high, but sometimes you can fool people. I always say that, you know, I played in the, you know, I play in the Dynasty Game Theory Invitational, and it was the year that Amon Ra took off. And it was the, that was the year that uh, Chase Claypool, um, you know, just finished his great year. So, you know, like, Chase Claypool was valued, value. Oh, don't don't claim Chase Claypool. He was valued nice. higher in the consensus than Amon Ross St. Brown and the great JJ Zacharyson sent me a trade offer, uh, Chase Claypool for Amon Ross straight up. And I I looked at it and I said, I, I almost clicked it because every ranking I looked at had Chase Claypool ahead of Amon Ross St. Brown. There wasn't a single place you could go on the internet where that was inverse. And I was like. Wait a second. I think I should do I am compelled to take this trade. And then I I just resisted. Um, you know, I resisted and I never made the deal. And thank God, because now Amon Ra is a top five dynasty wide receiver, and yeah. Chase Claypool is a top five hundred <laughs> dynasty wide receiver. He yeah, isn't a top five hundred, I believe. He might be a top 50 CFL receiver <laughs> sooner than later, but so the <laughs> point knows? is is there may be a trade like that where you can find someone whose value uh, at the moment exceeds their future value. And you can sort of work that deal where you're getting Rashi rice and giving something up. That's seems like it's as valuable, but isn't so Rashi rice really, really cool uh, that he's come through like this. I, I love it. He's, he's awesome. So. Yeah, dude, it has been incredible. He's one of those guys that like I, I might let die on my roster eventually down the road in his career. Obviously he was only a rookie. I picked him up, like, you know, with those chiefs receivers, 
you want to get the cheapest one at the beginning of the off season. Rushy Rice was that this season. Yeah. I have a few leagues where I just threw him on the bottom of a bench before the season even started. A couple of those leagues, I was able to actually hang on to him. And man, he helped teams that had no business being there yeah. get into the semis and the finals. And it was awesome to watch. What I thought was really cool was 8.3 yards after catch per reception, Jax. That is the most, I believe the most in this sample that I have. Oh no, mm -hmm. second only behind surprise, surprise Debo at 8.75 yards after the catch wow. per reception. That's interesting yeah. though, because Debo gets a lot of schemed up targets behind the line of scrimmage where Rasheed Rice is a lot bigger mm -hmm. than Debo and he's running a lot of different routes than is Debo at 6'2", 203. So um, I think it's pretty damn impressive. 8.3 yards after the catch per reception for Rasheed Rice. I think if you're looking at these metrics, it's a deeper look into Rashi Rice and a little bit of confirmation that he's the guy. You know, sometimes you can look at things, ah, it's a little fool's gold. You know, he's playing with the best quarterback in the world. It's you know, I mean, he just got a little lucky that everybody else was hurt, yada, yada. But look, these these underlying uh, metrics, I think, prove that Rashi has got some staying power. So, yeah, you kudos. Know it. Okay, Jax, I got a couple more to talk about mm. here. Um, teammates, actually, and then I will let you fly out of here. I've already kept you longer than I mentioned. Wanted to keep it at a quick one. Uh, also thought going in that getting you and I on a mic is kind of tricky to do that because we love to talk this stuff. But there's going to be plenty of time for that because we are teammates. I'm now, doing brother. good. You're doing fantastic. I'm worried doing about good. myself, brother. I'm worried about yeah. myself over here. <laughs> Um, uh, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have teammates. lots of opportunity here because we are teammates with the Undroppables. Go follow all that. Check out the YouTube's and the socials. That's where I'm at. Check it out, guys. Please, please, please. I'm um, gonna fire off these other couple though. Number twelve in this category, Nico Collins. And then number 24 was Tank Dell, his mm. teammate. Obviously, we didn't get to see Tank Dell a part of that playoff run for the Houston Texans. Boy, did we ever see some Nico Collins. Sure um did. So my first question on these guys, how close would you have them in Dynasty? Because I think Nico's creeping up into that back end of the top 12 for some people. Uh, curious as to what kind of compression you have between him and Tank Dell. Because uh, I, I personally think it might be a little bit closer than people are giving it credit for. It, yeah, it's very close. By the way, can you give me the players, like the two players in front of and the two players behind uh, Tank Dell in this in this yes. uh, targets per route run uh, list. I'm I'm just dying to kind of know the group he's keeping. Totally. So Tank Dell's at number 24. I'm going to give you the three in front because one of them is a tight end. Mike Evans at 21. 22 is Travis Kelsey. Um, and then number 23 is Garrett Wilson. So Evans mm -hmm. and Wilson at wide receiver ahead of him. Jamar Chase right behind him. Kendrick Bourne right behind him. Uh, there you so go. That's, Thank yeah, you. it's a sneaky little year for your boy Kendrick, my man. Yeah, he was he was playing great. Um, I, I asked that question specifically because, you know, you sort of you, you said, you know, Nico's at 12 and 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 Tank was at 24. But I, when I think about this stat, I do know that there's going to be great players sort of littered throughout. And mm -hmm. sure enough, there they were, Jamar Chase, uh, you know, Travis Kelsey, et cetera. So, yeah, he's keeping great company. You know, I didn't want people to think, oh, he's not as good. No, this is he was he was securing targets at a very, very high rate. Obviously, once he left. Nico sort of probably you know exceeded that. I, if I if I were to guess, I would guess that that's how that went. Um, For the most part, yeah, yeah. I have them very very close in dynasty. Um, both for me are in the top twenty. Uh, Nico's at uh, wide receiver nineteen. Tank Dell at wide receiver fourteen. Um, you know, nice yeah. tank ahead of Nico. Yes, sir. That yeah. is spicy, and I love it, buddy. I uh, I've. Don't have quite the plums that you have, but I might end up. All off season, you know, everything that I saw pointed to Tank Dell being like legit awesome. And, yeah. and so I was like, wait, this kid looks awesome. Except two things. Two things were, well, three, three things total were scary. One was his size. I mean, he is yeah. super, super small, which was like, okay, well, Maybe that matters. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. We've been, we said all this with Devonte Smith and it didn't seem to matter. So maybe it doesn't. And then the second thing was level of competition. It was like, okay, he did all this, but he did it against, you know, a certain level of competition. Well, at the senior bowl, 
he sort of squashed that because he literally had people cutting out a line to not face him in the one-on-ones. And then the third thing I suppose was just his age, you know, he's a fifth year player and, you know, maybe this is just a little bit of, you know, experienced player playing against younger inferior competition. So those were the concerns, but past those concerns, he had zero, like he was just dominant in every way. When you watch the film, you know, he, he was just, he was just instantly open all the time on film and, you know, the, the data supported that. I mean, he was a dominant player scoring touchdowns, you know, at that size to score touchdowns, you know, you got to break free. Um, yeah. His his separation rate was was best, you know, that you could find. So, look, all that translated at every step of the way. So I'm of the opinion that that's who he is, right? That he is an elite separator with extreme explosion, playing alongside one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL and C.J. Stroud, who's also young and on his rookie deal, who also – you know, pleaded with the front office to draft Tank Dell. So I think they're tied at the hip. I think, you know, as goes CJ Stroud, so goes Tank Dell. And for those reasons, I am very, very bullish on Tank Dell. So yeah, I am not scared. I love that. I love that. I don't think I have too much more to say on that aside from I'm going to be revisiting my Tank Dell rankings because I'm kind of in the same boat. The thing that worries me is like the injuries and the size and stuff, but maybe I need to revisit how much that's impacting my evaluation of Tank Dell because same boat, like cooking dudes and scoring long ass touchdowns Yep. um, with more regularity than is, let's say, average for you know, those deep threat guys, he was really, really lighting it up with CJ Stroud. So I love to hear that Jax. That's all we got on this one. I really appreciate it. Like honestly, super impromptu. It was a matter of a couple hours and you were ready to jump on with me. So cannot thank you enough. Go follow this man at Dino Game Theory on x.com. The anatomy of a top 15 quarterback just came out and the other positions will be releasing soon. I'm excited to do another one of these jacks where we unravel some of those if you Mm. will um go follow at the undroppables on all the socials as well you can see me mobbing around there and then the youtube channel is the biggest one i really want to grow that really want to get some shows pumping and uh you know uh you're going to see me on unraveled and then some other stuff popping up soon hopefully so um jacks any parting words for the people that's it baby that's it love it buddy until next time peace go get them